Welcome back to episode two, the Light Drop Podcast. Two friends talking creativity and beyond. My name is Jamil. My name is Jeff. What's up? So My yeah, what's up? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> you got for me. I got I got some stuff to tell you. We got some stuff to share. I'm I'm looking forward to to finding out what, what's in your thoughts. Yeah, man. Tell me what what you got for me this week. So yeah, so I um, listened to a couple of podcasts. Just to, I think I listen to podcasts constantly, either with, through work or driving or something. And I think I definitely heard some some gems that I would like to share. Uh, so one of them <clears throat> is from um, Matthew and Cena. He's he's one of Chris Doe's like coworkers. I think that yeah, to- yeah, I've seen him. I've seen him on YouTube. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. So he he had an episode, and I was, I mean, I've been following his work for a minute. So um, whenever I see him somewhere, I'll definitely pay attention to it. So he um, he was in this other podcast, and he was talking about this exercise that he did when he was um, part of this course. It was called like the Alt MBA, and it's this like you know it's like four or five thousand dollar course, and it's supposed to teach you about empathy. And one of the exercises that he shared was um, kind of you find work or not even work. You you write um, a response or, yeah, you write, you basically support an op- opposing uh, thought. So let's say, like, there's something that you very much disagree with, like, uh, I don't know, like the death penalty or something. You kind of say, mm-hmm. like what would be, this is the reason why this should be done. Um, and you can do that with, you know, your own work. I think uh, looking at your personal work, maybe you look at like older work that you've done. And a lot of times I think people will critique their work as if they're had that, they had the same skills as before. Um, so you can look at your own work and just say like, what are, what are the things that make this thing good like what did i do right uh to sort of be a little bit kinder to yourself um you can do that with other work that you see um whether it's like very contrastly work kind of things that you would never touch but you recognize things that you know pop out to you maybe you see uh things that the artists had done right uh or the creative had done right and then you just support it with a paragraph or a couple of sentences And, you know, you can do that with everything that you're doing, whether it's, you know, work or family or friends, you you sort of build empathy by supporting those opposing thoughts and pushing yourself to the limits of why were those things done correctly. So I just thought that was a really cool, like, exercise. I mean, the the one that he picked was, like, white supremacy. I was like, yo, Uh that is intense. (laughs) (laughs) So... (laughs) Just doing it on a light paragraph. Yeah. yeah, that'll 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 get your creative juices flowing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I that, you know what that makes me think of is is I actually saw um, a post on LinkedIn, kind of drawing the line between that distinction of an artist and a creative, or or, or I'm sorry, an artist and a designer. Right. Yeah. Like knowing the difference. And that kind of makes me think of of how you would see one thing as an artist, one thing as a de- as a as a designer. Right. Because in the post, he was essentially saying how an artist that's kind of like you, your internal visions, things that you resonate with, things that you like to do, things that you like to create colors that you like themes that you like you know your ideas whereas designers are bringing out other people's ideas and bringing other people's visions to life so there's there's remarkable aspects to both there's like there's there's a need for both right yeah but there's also that balance of of going too far in one direction right where you may only be an artist you never kind of kind of look at other people's ideas and try to bring other people's ideas to fruition 
Yeah. And that in turn could leave you being kind of stagnant in your own work, yeah. you know, because you don't have those other perspectives of, of other people's ideas, other people's thoughts, other people's visions. And then on the flip side, if you're spending so much time as a designer, right. And, and I honestly feel like I felt fell into this trap uh, a, a few years ago in that all you're doing is bringing bringing about other people's creative visions, other people's notes, other people's ideas, and putting all your energy into that, then you really start to feel detached and separated from yourself yeah. and your ideas. And, and it starts to feel, it doesn't feel good. It's very uncomfortable, right? If you, if you're yeah. someone who identifies, I'm finding that there's people who identify as one or the other, right? You don't necessarily have to, but I, I find people do like they'll say, oh, I'm a designer or I'm an artist. And I feel like the people who would identify as an artist first are really sensitive to to getting pulled away from that for an extended period of time working on other people's work. So, yeah, that's interesting what you said about like like that exercise to to view someone else's thoughts, opposing thoughts are, you know, especially as it creates to like artistic styles, right? Things that you may not necessarily find appealing, yeah. but find ways to make it appealing. You know, yeah. that's, you know, that's a good exercise. Opening up yourself to that. It's, I think it's what allows you to ask questions. Once you're able to ask questions about, you know, other people or other people's work in general, and go deeper than that by empathizing with them uh, and through that exercise or any other exercise then your work starts to also gain that deeper meaning because now you're you have uh, opposing ideas uh, you're not just thinking in a linear way you're open to like all the possibilities so i mean i think empathy is super important in the creative industry i mean it's a, it's definitely i think it's like a, a hot topic but it's it's not a bad thing that you could practice to become a better artist in general. It's just four thousand dollars though. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> For empathy course is it crazy. Was, he he said that it was like a leadership course, so it, it just taught taught him a bunch of stuff. But that was part of the, okay. the course. Yeah. Uh, but nah. So that was that was definitely. Um, I don't know. It was just yeah. sound like a an interesting idea for, for moving forward. Yeah, I I I read something not too long ago um, regarding interest, you know, and and enthusiasm. Yeah. And when you're trying to build enthusiasm yourself about something, really all it takes is enthusiasm and interest. Really, all it takes is. Um, discovering and, and researching and acclimating yourself with that topic. So for example, if, if someone said to you, Hey, you know, do you want to go to a baseball game with me? Right. And they're, and they love baseball. They're, they're into all the stats, all the teams, all the history. Right. And you're not okay. right. Then you may be like, oh, okay. And you're watching baseball and it's hard for you to enjoy it. You know? Yeah. But really all it takes is if you would if you would take an hour, two hours, three hours, and just research baseball, research the history of baseball, research the recent history of baseball, right? The storylines, the the teams, the rules, right? Mm -hmm. All all the different things, right? If if you just spend even just a couple hours, then you would get some interest in it because now you understand now you see oh okay that's i didn't that's pretty interesting i didn't know that and yeah. you would you would surprise yourself to to see how interested and engaged you can become in something that you didn't previously have any interest in yeah just by just by doing a little bit of research about that topic so i think that that's kind of that that could that's relevant towards anything regarding design or art too where there's a particular style of art that you don't enjoy or a movie genre or a book genre, right? Spend a little bit of time, 
you know, not a ton. You don't need to force anything, but yeah. I think it, I think that's, that's a good exercise too, worth just doing some background research, um, looking up some information about that thing that you're not interested in and see how it changes your perspective on it to, to give you some interest. And most importantly, the most important word around all of this is enthusiasm, because if you have enthusiasm about something, then you can bring that enthusiasm to someone else. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You know, you, we all know somebody who's super excited about something that you know nothing about, <laughs> but anytime you talk to them about it, they get super hyped. They talk about it. They're like explaining it to you and you feel that you feel like that enthusiasm about yeah. that thing. You know, if a lot of times it might be just a family member or something or a friend and they're not trying to sell you on something, but, when you dive into the the nature of trying to sell somebody your ideas, trying to trying to make a proposition for them to to buy something from you, whether it's your your service, right, your your art product, then it takes enthusiasm to to do that, to give someone else enthusiasm. So yeah. I think that that was a really that was a really interesting point about building enthusiasm, how it's it's possible to get that. Yeah. Even in things that you weren't re you weren't normally enthused about. Yeah, you just gotta put yourself in there. You can find out a lot. So dope, man. So like the next things uh, going on with that that theme of looking inward, looking at other people. Let's talk about narrative identity. Have you heard about this before? Narrative, I no. Okay, so I've never heard that. I have a feeling that it's probably something that I've that I've heard, but I've never heard it. I've never heard it explained as, as that narrative identity. Yeah. You probably, you probably very familiar with this theory, but it's basically uh, a theory that we form an identity with stories through experiences and that's who we become. So basically the story you tell of yourself is who you end up becoming. And this has been studied. It's been looked at. It's um, it's been used to assess like people who have problems with alcohol, alcoholism, they'll um, continue drinking based on the stories that they're telling themselves, basically like memories, like saying, Hey, I've always been a drinker. I used to drink when I was a certain age, uh, my father, and that's just something that they just keep repeating to themselves. And they continue to form these patterns just because they're telling themselves that this is who they are. But on the flip side, the positive thing is that uh, these stories are very structured in a typical story it has a beginning, a middle and an end. So if you're going through something right now, you could say that this is the middle of my story because I'm processing something. So when you think about it, it's more of a positive thing, because if you say that this is the end of my story, then it becomes a lot more sad and like, you know, you don't have as much energy to do anything else because this is the end of whatever it is that you want to do. Uh, but, you know, you, as long as you're saying that I'm in the middle of it, if you're going through it, uh, this identity can start to shift as more positive things happen to your life. And even, you know, 30 years from now, if you're remembering something, if you remember it in a positive way, your narrative identity will be positive for that period of time. Like, let's say, you know, for me, uh, I think positively about when I didn't have any money as a freelancer and I was trying to juggle like, you know, a thousand dollars a month in, you know, Savannah. And, um, you know, when I think back, back on it now, I still get excited because I took a leap of faith. And even at the time I felt like I was, when I decided I want to be a graphic designer, I felt like I was towards the right path. I was at least doing something that I was closer to my dreams. And thinking back on it, I'm so glad that I did it. And I don't have any like negative feelings about the process. Cause like, I'm still here. I'm still enjoying the fruits of my labor at this point. I'm still young in my career. Um, and that's my narrative identity. And I, I feel like you also very much uh, align with that because you we've talked about this before about telling yourself one thing and sticking to it and staying positive. So tell me your thoughts on that, on your narrative. Yeah, no, there's, there's, see, that makes me think a lot about 
creative writing because there's absolutely nothing different between what you just said and and writing a story, right? If I'm if I'm creating a world, if I'm creating a science fiction novel or a fantasy novel, the first thing I need to do is figure out what my story is, right? What's the story yeah. of the character that I'm following? And the only way to do that is to is to build up that character's background their experiences to have a full understanding of what they've been through right yeah when you're when you're actually the one that's penciling that in when you're when you're when you're crafting these characters you're doing it from this this bird's eye view where you can see where they started where they're at now and then of course you as the writer knows where they're going so so it's it's very much it's very much kind of i don't know it's kind of deep to think that that's exactly what we're doing with our lives right you know what i mean how many times have you heard that you're the that you're the the author to your own story you know you yeah. you create your own reality right yeah like like the thoughts that you think lead to the actions that you take, yeah. you know, I think in a broader term, you could say that thoughts are thoughts are energy. You know, thoughts thoughts are energy, literally. In that, the th the things that you think will lead you to the actions that you take, and so I think a lot of people get tripped up very easily in thinking that that they're they're a victim to, or they're only able to go with the flow of their thoughts, right? Like yeah. the, the, the if, if you may be in a, yeah, if you, if you're in a, if you're in a tough place creatively right now, I know my industry, the visual effects industry, a lot of artists, livelihoods, confidences have been really shaken up this year. Exactly. And yeah. it's, it's really easy to, it's really easy to fall into the trap of thinking that the emotions that you're feeling now are a result of the things that are happening to you. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of power in knowing that you control your thoughts and your thoughts are what are controlling your emotions. So to your point about that, that narrative identity it's really important to just kind of stay diligent on that story that you're telling yourself. Oh, there's, you know, this is a bad time right now. There's, there's no work out here. I don't know what's coming next or yada, yada, yada. Yeah. You know, though, those are, that's you thinking that, and you could just as easily think positively, think optimistically and for, for no other reason than to just feel better. Yeah. Right. To yeah. just feel better and in 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 where you are right now wherever you are right now that's that's ultimately why we do anything is because we think that we'll feel better in having it or doing it or being there or seeing that thing you know anything that we want mm -hmm. you know strikes to be over work to pick up you know we we want that thing because we think that we'll feel better when it happens and so our challenge always is to just find a way to feel better now yeah. <laughs> regardless of what's happening and when you can when you can inject that into your work when you can inject that into into creativity the things that you bring out of other people then that's when you really set yourself apart as a creative you know in your industry in your office yeah. in your school, you know, bringing in that, that energy, super important. But next idea, man. So I'm going to finish off with a dangerous idea. Oh. So I've talked about this blog before. It's called edge.org. This is my book that um, it's not my personal book, but it was a book that was recommended to me by my professor at SCAD. And this whole book was like just a bunch of interesting questions and ideas. 
And I think it's super important to be asking yourself questions as you go along as you work. I feel like from the difference between me being more of a junior to being more of a mid was the questions that I started asking about myself and my work as I was working. Uh, you know, whether the whether it depended on like speed or um, thinking about the client, things like that. It was just asking better questions. So a good exercise, me, Mr. Exercise Guy, <laughs> is to ask yourself better questions. So this dangerous idea that I read from this book, it's by Scott D. Sampson, and his dangerous idea is that the purpose of life is to, to disperse energy. Um, so obviously we're, we're aware of thermodynamics, it happens in the atmosphere, it happens in the biosphere, all the spheres. And then on a smaller level, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You you making assumptions about me now? How about you, we're aware, we're aware of thermodynamics. <laughs> thermodynamics, yeah. I mean, you you know what thermodynamics? Wait a minute, what you know you know that word. <laughs> you may have to you may have to you may have to backtrack a second and get me up to speed on thermodynamics. <laughs> <laughs> it's thermo. It's it's okay. So it's basically I know a thermos. You talking about like the like, movement like a thermos? Thermos? in in a uh, in a sphere of space so like things uh molecules go from a uh, condensed space into an area where they can disperse so heat same thing thermodynamics heat travels up to the sky um so this is all obviously leading back to the the idea that all organizes or all organizism yeah. I have to cut that out. <laughs> all organized organisms, organisms, sorry. Organisms. <laughs> all <laughs> organisms. <laughs> no, wait, I like organisms. Organisms. <laughs> it's a lot better, right? <laughs> uh, but not. We're, we're all constantly dispersing energy, right? Organisms are temporary waypoints uh, for the sun. They're basically, um, on a macro level, we're a community of organic batteries uh, dispersing energy throughout everything that we do. I mean, uh, we spoke a little bit earlier about the sparks that um, start in your mind and then eventually become the things that you do on a macro level or micro, sorry. And then macro, obviously, you get up, you, you, you have the energy to do things. So you go forth and you, you build things, you build houses, right? As a human being, build families, bigger thing, communities. So it's just this, this cascading effect that are all caused by the sun because we have the energy to do it. And we're slowly dispersing energy throughout the things that we do. Even, um, you know, you have an idea, you tell someone an idea, they might take that idea and transfer it to something else. Um, and it, the whole thing is just energy because obviously it took energy and electric energy, even that, to think of that idea and then verbal energy to tell it. And then now those people are going to share it and disperse it to somebody else. So I just thought it was an interesting um, idea and question to ponder on because in the end, um, Scott S Sampson, he basically says that it is a profound thing to think of life like that because that means that everything matters it's not just you know humans get to do whatever they want you know everything in the world that can produce energy is worthwhile because it's part of the bigger community right um so if you think about yourself as that like i'm part of a, a bigger job a bigger role i think it can really help you identify some things that you might not even be thinking about or new opportunities. Um, you can connect with nature a bit more, <laughs> I think. But yeah, that's that's it. I mean, it's it's a very thought uh, thought provoking idea and something that I think we should revisit every once in a while. No, I I um I had a moment it was a, I, I want to say it was like maybe a week ago, a couple of days ago, where I was I was sitting on my couch, and I was reading. I was very it was very quiet in the house, 
and I just came, I just became like very acutely aware in that moment that I was sitting, I was sitting here on a couch in the year 2023, right? Right. With all these things happening around me that, that are a result of literally millions of years of (laughs) evolution. Yeah. Right. Like, like you think back to like, at some point in time, the, 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 the plot of land that I'm sitting on now was prehistoric. Right. It was right. Like at some point in time, it was nothing. Yeah. You know, and it's like, without getting too deep, right. Like I didn't, I, you know, I wasn't high or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but it was like it was like really interesting because it was like it was almost it was almost like very comforting. Yeah. Because because it, it kind of reminded me that like this is what we're here for. Everything else that may be causing me stress right now is stress that's being caused up here. Yeah. You know, if you, you know, thinking about work or, or, or bills or relationships or, you know, whatever is going on, conflict in the world, like it's not actually in my immediate environment causing me harm. Yeah. You know, so any discomfort that I'm feeling is, is all up here, you know, because of these other concepts that that we've created in society and and so yeah everything everything that is now is a result of thoughts that were thought to create things in the past you yeah. know so so like that's very empowering to think to think that way because you know I know that that what is is old news so what's coming is what's a result of what I'm thinking now, what I'm saying now, what I'm encouraging people about now, what I'm, you know, what I'm receiving now. Exactly. And so, yeah, that, uh, everything is energy. Yeah. You know, everything is energy. So, so yeah, that's, we could, we could, we could dive, we could talk for, for hours and hours and hours about that. I'm sure. Yeah, exactly. That, that effect that people have on each other. And I think in creative, the creative industry, I think, like you said, we're very acute and aware of that energy. And it's, it's important to protect that. It's super important to protect it. And oh, I think that is, I feel like, I feel like people who are in creative industries, had a moment when they were younger where they made a decision, right? Yeah. Where, you know, especially people who are, who, who've always been in creative industries, right? Went to, went to creative universities or, you know, got into graphic design, like straight out of college or didn't go to college, went straight from high school into doing design work or some kind of artistic field, right? People who are in artistic industries at some point in time made a very, distinct decision to be who they are to be to be to be in a position to to express exactly who it is who they are and that's not to say that that professionals in you know doctors and 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 engineers and 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 in those fields people in finance right aren't aren't in those positions because they love them and and because they're passionate about it and because it expresses who they are. But, but something about the creative professionals, there was a very important switch that, that happened that caused them to say, you know what, I want to do this thing. You know, I want to do, I want to create this. I want to create this for people. I want to create this for myself. And so you fast forward over the course of one's creative career, you may fall into working at an agency or you may fall into doing a lot of design contract work for other people. 
and it's easy to fall into that tunnel after yeah. you know months years go by to ultimately reaching a point where all of a sudden you feel like you fell into that same hamster wheel that you try to avoid when you made the decision to get into your artistic field mm -hmm. and so i think that's where that sensitivity comes from because when that when that burnout starts to creep in because you feel stagnant because you're not actually creating your work or or you're you're spending so much energy dealing with with the office politics and 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 clients and and all of that then it, it's it hits it hits much harder where you become very much aware again of of how you've kind of deviated in a way from who you are as an artist that decision that you made you know and i think that is that like those feelings of burnout or those feelings of of being stuck is just a good opportunity to 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 take stock of how you feel and to kind of remember that you know that that uncomfortable decision that you made on the onset of your career wasn't some kind of some kind of flag that you could place and say okay I did it I'm a creative you know, I, I'm an artist, I'm, I'm in an artistic industry, like I did it, you know, it's, it's a constant to, to, to be a creative, to be an artist. It's a constant uprooting of, of your comfort level. You yeah. know, there, there's that difference between, there's that difference between stagnation and like being comfortable. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And I, I feel like, when you start feeling that uncomfortableness, since it's so new, it can give you a lot of anxiety, right? So like like we were talking about, like when you're, you know, you're waiting for bookings or, um, you know, you're not sure if the contract is going to go through. Like I've been in these situations where it's like I'm waiting for, uh, you know, either somebody to pay me or something like that, and I'm just constantly worried about like, maybe I'm not good enough for this. And I feel like once that thought creeps in, you you forget that, you know, you've achieved something, you know, you've gotten to a certain point where you're waiting for <laughs> this certain thing. And even though at that point, it's a very, it's probably rocky, um, whether it's like a slow season or something, but if you just remind yourself that I'm still here because I decided that I wanted to pursue this, you're able to reconnect with it and calm yourself down and just understand that, you know, this is, it's a process. <laughs> yeah. I've had, dude, I've had, I've had a lot of angst this year yeah. kind of based off what you were just talking about, about their work. Work has been very slow tell, to myself. Tell me about it. A lot of it's how, been very, I mean, how's that been? It's been, it's been tough, man. It's been very tough. You know, my work, work has been very, very, very slow. For me, I, I'm I've always been a contract freelancer, yeah. so um, it's not like I was, it's not like I was uh, laid off, right? Like yeah. so many other of my peers in in the industry, but just finding work in between bookings has just been few and very very far between. And after a while, just like you said, that kind of self doubt creeps in because you may not be extremely plugged in to to other people who may be working or or, or, you know, tapped into the news. So, so some of those doubts of, oh, is this, you know, is this because of my experience of my skills, right? Is it like those kind of self self doubts start to creep in, yeah. you know, a lot. And, and I think even more so than that, what starts to, what has started to happen has really been like this self-reflection of, of why you know i'm doing this in the first place you know why i got into into the role that i'm that i'm in now mm -hmm. uh, as a creative professional as a lighting artist in the visual effects industry because i think back to how hard i busted my ass right to get to get started out of high out of, out of, out of high school out of, out of college to get into the industry to get the experience that i've got 
to to work on the projects that I've worked on, right? All of the like I've paid my dues yeah. to, to 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 work and have busted my ass and you look up and it's been one month, two months, three months, four months without work and you're and you're kind of like you feel like you kind of feel like you have nothing to show for it, right? Yeah. It's so like hard. almost like almost like you've been renting an apartment for the last four years yeah. and they they changed your lease and now <laughs> you don't act you still don't actually own anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's like it's it's kind of been that it's kind of been that that psychological psychological thing with with myself to really buckle, you know, buckle down on on ensuring that whatever it is that I do next or or you know when I when I resume working again that I'm very much conscious about also remembering to create for myself to to not just get lost in 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 the sauce so to speak you know yeah and i think creating for yourself what it does it it reinsures you that you can do it because i think when you're working and you have you have a like you have like a brief right you have all these all this content it makes sense i think to your brain as far as like the level that you're at right now it makes sense to for you because it feels like you know you're doing some work but when you have personal work, I think, and you, maybe you don't have that brief, but you're still creating, you're still getting almost that, that, uh, dopamine of creating something. <laughs> and I think that's how you, you can like sustain it's yourself growth. as far as is growth. You said what? It, it's growth. That's what it is. Growth. Yeah. Dopamine is growth. Yeah. Just realizing that, you know, I still got it. I still, I can still do this. Um, uh, you're having that conversation with yourself when you're doing those um pieces just for yourself so it's like super important I've, I've been trying to get back into it for sure because i've also i mean even me being i'm now that i'm i'm, I'm a full-time graphic designer and i'm probably the most secure that i've ever been in my life and i still feel like i don't belong or I don't have the ability to do it, even though logically I know and I and I'll get like anxious maybe sometimes when it's like, you know, something is it's it's due and I have like a specific deadline and it needs to go or the whole project is ruined. And I'll have anxiety attacks where I'm like just like I can't breathe. I need to walk around. I need like space. But <clears throat> when I have time and I'm able to breathe and slow down my breathing a bit. Uh, that's what I do. I reassure myself in those small moments that I can do this. And it's just this, it doesn't stop. I, I don't think it'll ever stop for us. Like even, you know, we're 80 years old and we're professors or something. That self-doubt is always there. That's the thing. It's like, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I, I completely hear you. I still have, I still have um, moments sometimes where I think about, like rendering something you know overnight and it's like even though i've rendered a million things and i have this experience i know that all it takes is for like for me to forget one thing or it's like you know just just when you're dealing with with clients you're dealing with with studios that you're working for and all the money that goes into these projects that you're working on there's that there's also that added kind of like anxiety to like underlying like like you know like what we're doing in the grand scheme of things is all subjective and it's like and it's all very much just just to make a commercial <laughs> or a movie yeah. or something but it's like like i said you get you know when you when when we all got into this in the first place to create to to bring out um, you know, those stories that we want to tell and, and, you know, whatever our medium is, we, we get trapped sometimes yeah. years, months, you know, months, years in that, that hamster wheel, like I said, of, 
dealing with clients and working for others and deadlines and this and that and schedules and all of a sudden it's not, you know, burnout creeps in and it's, and it's not, and it's, and it's this departure from that initial, that initial thing that you wanted, right? Growth, that artistic growth. And that's honestly, I feel like that's what the anxiety is. It's that it's, you know, it's not yours, right? Yeah. Because that anxiety turns into, you know, when it's your project that you're working on, right? And there's this uncertainty about it, right? It's just kind of like, it. it it's frustrating, but it's like, it's also like energizing because it's yours. And it's like, okay, how can I solve this? How can I, how can I figure this out? But yeah, the moment you inject deadlines and, and yeah. budgets and clients and other people's subjective opinions and notes, then the anxiety, yeah, the anxiety is, is really inevitable to be, to be truthful. Yeah. To, you know, after a while, if you don't take us, if you don't take a bit of time to, to take care of yourself. Yeah. And I, the, I think about those personal projects now as a, kind of like a studio session with my younger self, whether it's, you know, if, if I was able to, to sit down and take my time and like, really, like if I was showing off to like 13 year old Jeff, like, what would that feel like? It'd probably be very cool, you know, because I'd feel very energized showing my younger self all the stuff I've learned. Um, Jeffrey the Gray. You said <laughs> Jeffrey the Gray, exactly. <laughs> I'd be old and talking to my younger self. But I think that that's the importance of those personal projects. It's that, you know, it you, you can really gain a lot of um, energy and just emphasize your your art in everything that you do and revitalize some of that uh, spark and yeah, just, just get back into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Hey man, I'm glad, I'm glad that you're enjoying the position you're in though. Cause I remember, yeah. I, re I do remember, you know, that period of time where you were very much questioning your, your abilities and I'm looking at, you know, I th it's always easier. It's always easier to look at someone else and see very clearly their capabilities, you know? Yeah. It's, their, their, yeah. their, their, their competency at, at what it is they're setting out to do. It's, it's always tough to, to tell it to yourself, you know, but like, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I saw it in you years ago. It's like, yeah, you're going to be, gonna be just fine man there's 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 always that that self-doubt that kind of creeps in but yeah, yeah I, I think I remember, I remember when you when you came to SCAD and you know we were talking and I think I, I had like bombed like an interview it was like terrible man I felt so bad and I, I came up to you and we're talking or something. And I was just, I think I told you about the situation or I just, I think you could just see that like, I was like, that was my one opportunity to maybe make it right. And you just telling me like, Hey, do you have people's emails? And I was like, yeah, it's like, that's all you need <laughs> from now on. Just, just don't worry about it because it's like, you can always come back uh, and talk to them and show them like, Hey, I've, gotten better but that was just i mean i remember that helping me out with so much of my anxiety when, when i was still at school mm -hmm. i was like as long as i got their emails <laughs> i can always come yeah <laughs> yeah i do remember that actually i do remember that yeah i remember yeah. that i think that was kind of like yeah man that was born off of out of my experience with with just cold emailing and and feeling like at the time you're making absolutely no progress. Yeah. When I look back, like, like even, oh man, there was, it was a while ago now. It was probably like almost two years ago, but I was leading this job. And one of the people that I was, that, that one of my like artists, one of the, one of these lighters was, was booked and 
I remember just thinking, I was like, this name sounds familiar. I've never worked with this person before, mm-hmm. but this name sounds very familiar. And it was a fleeting thought at the time, right? And and we worked together. We worked, he was awesome, right? And I also got kind of the I got kind of the um the impression that he felt the same way. Mm-hmm. You know, like when we would talk like one on one, I could kind of you know, it kind of felt like we know each other from somewhere. You know what I mean? Like there was that between us. We didn't we didn't actually like say it, but like there was that vibe going on. And just this year, I was looking back through my LinkedIn DMs and I saw that I had messaged him in 2015 when I was like when I was like a month out of college. Yeah. Just asking him for you know, just like I was on LinkedIn, cold, just cold finding other lighters. And I messaged him just asking him for like advice or, you know, tips or something about getting into the industry. Yeah. So, so that was, so I was like, like completely forgot, but I was looking through my DMs and I was like, wait a minute. Like I led a job where he was, you know, one of the artists and like, I'm fast forwarding. Like, I don't even remember like in 2015, Wow. That I was that I had actually messaged this person asking for advice on how to get it. So it's like it just made me think of like no no effort is ever wasted, you know? Yeah. Like like after having had had years of of kind of proof of that. Yeah. There's confidence in knowing like, okay, nothing is nothing is ever wasted. I'm reaching out to people, I'm sending sending emails. They may not be replying but the effort will not be wasted. You know, like it'll come back around in some way, shape or form. Somebody will have read it or have seen it or recognize me in some way. Yeah. Cause I mean, you just need one, one yes, <laughs> you know, when you're, when you're starting off, you just need like one yes. So that's the, you just pursue that relentlessly. <laughs> yeah, man. You got anything else you got? Was that, that was that was all my my three ideas. I mean, obviously, I have I have a couple of things that I've been thinking about, but I think uh, those are more. Like, you hold on to them. Yeah, I gotta hold on to those ones. I gotta marinate, <laughs> <laughs> marinate those ideas. Yeah, I had. Um, I came across a couple things myself um, over the past few days that I thought were interesting. Nothing too, nothing too like deep just kind of like news that I saw. I think one of the one of the most interesting things in a while um that I wanted to run past you was this the the technology that's emerging with um with uh like volumetric um animation, right? Like like uh in real time, say for example, I know they did a I know they did something with uh MBA either earlier this year or last year where it's just essentially a real time animation of the game, right? Mm-hmm. Where, where they can, where they can, where they can put this, this virtual environment to have all of the players moving around. And because it's virtual, you could put your camera anywhere. Interesting. You see what I'm saying? So like, you may have seen like the early adaptation of that with, with those virtual courtside seats. Mm. How they have with VR, the the VR headsets like and everything. Public? Or recently, I think they had that. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they 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 have the 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 VR technology with the headsets, the yeah. Oculus, and now with Apple's headset, you're starting to see ways that they can now use it right like they made the technology but there's no content for it yeah and so this volumetric technology is when i kind of thought of the the ramifications and the possibilities of where it's going it just kind of got me like pretty excited you know to 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 think of of what sports and and live events could could end up turning into it's also kind of kind of black mirror ish yeah also. Like, <laughs> right like recently they had a um they had this 
Sunday morning football uh, mm. game where they did this parallel broadcast. Oh, they did this parallel broadcast of the same exact game, but with Toy Story characters. Mm-hmm. Right. So they had the broadcasters were like playing it up. They were they were talking about how they were running around in Woody's room and and the characters were the you know the, the actual players, but some of them were dressed up. Some of them had you know the the cowboy hats on and what have you. But it's 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 just a representation of the live game. Interesting. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But but the fact that it was Toy Story characters and animated allowed them to get away with the technology not being all the way there because they were, you know, they were moving kind of blocky and kind of choppy and, mm-hmm. you know, kind of quirky, but it just had me thinking, okay, well, fast forward, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years from now, where these, these volumetric animations are looking like, say for example, Madden or mm-hmm. NBA today, like the grab or better, right. Where it's looking well, photo real. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, now all of a sudden they essentially just have this exact recreation of the live event, whether it be a football game, a basketball game, tennis match, or like uh, NASCAR or F1, you know, they have this, they have this live representation of it virtually that they can put you in anywhere. Yeah. See what yeah. I'm saying? So, so like now all of a sudden you have this, you have this VR headset that you're watching the game but your perspective is from is from the player's POV. Yeah. Right? So like you're you're going you're 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 catching the ball or you're passing the ball or or maybe you're in the the cockpit of the F1 car. Yeah. You know. So it's just it just it was just very cool. I wanted to see what you thought about like kind of kind of the 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 progression of that technology if you think that it's actually like oh man, you something that's gonna blow up or if it's gonna stay gimmicky yeah technology like that can't be stopped and i'm excited about it because i think there'll be a lot of new opportunities to people throughout the world that they've never had to be able to visit places uh, there'll be a lot of like medical uh, assets that come out of this. I mean, even being able to like perform surgery on someone from a distance, maybe you're just telling someone what to do, things like that. We can, we kind of train. What? Yeah, no, was, that's crazy to think, especially especially when you think about you know a doctor in a, a doctor in fifty years is going to yeah. be someone who's, yeah. you know, two right now, who's going to grow up with all, who's going to grow up with this stuff. So to them, it's just going to be like, oh, this is what we do. I <laughs> I perform surgery from across the world. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I mean, I'm super, I'm, I'm excited about stuff like that. When Meta released their VR, did you see that? Uh, like Mark Zuckerberg's, I don't know, he was having an interview with somebody. The first time he introduced Meta, he had an interview, but the characters look like Xbox 360 characters. You know, like, <laughs> very gimmicky. That, I, I worked on some of those. Yeah, those I was like, I thought the same thing. I was like, these, I was like, I mean, I guess you got to start somewhere. But. Yeah, and now, like, I don't know if you've seen it, man, but it, the way that they, they're the, the realism that they have on those uh, 3D characters, it's amazing. Like, it's perfection. It's almost yeah, I was, real. <laughs> I was thinking the other day, like, so I've never seen with with something like with, with AI and with chat GPT and all the other technologies like that, you know, all the applications that have come out about, I've never seen something become so like so prevalent so fast because we weren't even you like i mean obviously chat gpt has been around for a few years in the background right yeah. but it wasn't in the mainstream at all i don't even think for all of this year 
right? Like I like I would say maybe like certainly wasn't wasn't mainstream at all last year. Yeah. But, but like I'm I'm trying to think when like when people started really talking about it. It must have been like January, you know, maybe February and and then ever since it's literally started to turn into just this commonplace. Yeah. Already. Yeah. Everywhere. With, with work with with offices adopting it and <laughs> and yeah. all these other things yeah. so it's kind of crazy just to think like it's literally exponentially getting better and in an in a year from now i think a lot of people are going to be surprised at well, not, not even surprised to be fair i think that people are kind of are kind of expecting it now right because people's attention spans even on social media are just getting shorter and shorter and shorter and I feel like that's going to represent itself too with the development of technology It's just going to like, you know, like if, 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 if the next iPhone can't like iron your clothes, <laughs> then people are going to be okay. You, you like, this is the same thing you, you had a year, right? Like yeah. there's all these other technologies yeah. who have been out for like two months, three months, and it's been this rapid development. So I, I feel like it's going to be, this very interesting, this interesting thing to to keep track of, like the the fast development and, and like almost what kind of gets left behind too, right? Because like yeah. I'm, I I was thinking, what do we have now, like right now on our desks that will be that will be outdated, like really outdated in a year, two years, you know? Yeah, I, I think, think of like think of like an iPod, you know? Yeah or or a or a walkman or a cd player like the equivalent of that just being absolutely antiquated like there's wow. something in our on our desks right now that will probably be that in in quicker time than we than we're than where you think yeah and i've seen obviously i've seen like designers using uh like vr I think it's called V-Ray Sketch or something like that to design things, right? So they're using the same Oculus, like um, I think it's like the controller or whatever. They're using that to design new things. But I could see that once that doesn't look so awkward, uh, I mean, at least for now, it's not as intuitive for the general public. But once it gets to a certain point where a kid could do it, I could see all of this being gone. like. No table. Yeah. Table, yeah. Chairs. <laughs> we just stand and do our thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. You go into no keyboards. No keyboard. You're no an keyboard, keyboard. No monitors. Yeah. No dishes. <laughs> <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's actually hilarious to me. You can literally just have an office that's just just. <laughs> It's just pictures on the wall. Right. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's crazy to think of. No, nah, but I'm excited yeah. for the most part of it. I think, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, benefits because once – I think when you can communicate something or a feeling a little bit better than – some things start to grow, right? If you can communicate a need by putting some, somebody in a space, then they don't have to go into the world to see that there's a, a problem or a war going on, right? So this is goes back to being able to get people to empathize with other people. I think that's going to be, be yeah, yeah, it's going to be it's going to be yeah. <laughs> To your point, to your point, when we started, when we started this episode, it's like, that's an exercise like that to, to outline other people's perspective, other people's point of views right. is going to be right. more important than ever. Those, these are the kind of things that, that, you know, need to be practiced now, right? Like, I think that, I think that a skill set, like an actual skill set that's going to be very highly sought after in the future is going to be 
the ability to empathize and to and to have and to be able to get emotion out of people because of because of how kind of virtual and 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 everything that things are going to you know technology is kind of taking place ai right like people that are really going to set themselves apart are going to be the the people who are able to inspire others and bring out emotion and and stories and and things in others and to be able to see see the broader picture and you know there's there's a lot of a lot of consumers especially younger that that I think are going to miss out on on that skill set on developing that skill set you know yeah. so so our generation for sure has has an opportunity to to really like it's just like it's just like we're talking about your narrative story right like to look ahead at like what do you want you know do you want to be in a creative industry that's detached or do you want to be in one that's more connected and you know vibrant and energetic and personable than ever yeah it's it's the you know both can exist but where you want to place yourself is is very much dependent on the attitude that you have now and and the thoughts that you think the things that you create to to put you towards where you want to be yeah and that's a good point because it's as as us being kind of like this generation where we're still we're still aware of the past enough where we didn't have some of these things. So we got to see each other a lot more. Uh, it's up to us to cultivate sense, like being able to explain things to somebody or, you know, understand uh, younger designers or um, people who are a bit more curious. It's just up to us to. What was it like? What was it like, grandpa? When, you know... <laughs> Tell us, grandpa. <laughs> What was it like to, to be in a classroom? <laughs> right? What was 30 other people? Sitting down for eight hours. <laughs> that sucked. Exactly. You're crippled. <laughs> you can barely walk. <laughs> but no, nah, man, it's like, like I said, like it's, it, it's, a, it's a good place to be because I think we're, our generation was super positive and it still is. And if we can continue that uh, as we get older and we're sharing a bit more then we're able to kind of restart this, this engine of thinking about people in a certain type of way. Uh, so empathy, super important. Yep. This, this whole, I, I honestly, I mean, it's my, it's my industry, like in parallel with, film, television, visual effects, animation. And but I'll admit that I don't completely know exactly the ins and outs of what's being what's trying to be discussed as far as artificial intelligence goes with the writers strikes and everything going on, but you know, I still understand that there's that there's that uncertainty and that fear almost about AI kind of taking over. And yeah, and I know that a lot of people have had this unsure sentiment lately about job security as a designer, you know, as a matte painter or as a, a, a concept artist, you know. And I think that if anything, what's happening now is it's it's putting that attention on the actual skill sets that we need to that we need to cultivate and that we need to keep, which are our human side of things, right? Yeah. Our ability to, like we said, empathize and to to actually resonate and connect with other human beings is going to be a skill set in yeah. the future. You know, yeah. more so than in it right now. It just kind of feels like, okay, yeah, of course that needs to, we need to have that. But I think that, I think that when you look down the line, it's, it's, it's something that 
that you need to kind of be conscious of now and to make sure that you're, you know, as you're working, you know, you, you kind of be this trendsetter to keep that in your work, right. And to, and to put that out in your work, even if you, even if you're utilizing the, the technology, of course, yeah, it's powerful yeah. and it's, and it's good, but, but you can still inject that emotion into it. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So I think, um, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot of nuance there and I'm sure a lot of politics too, but in the grand scheme of things, it's very simple, right? Just, yeah. <laughs> just, just remember to remember to look inward, to, 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 to look at to check in with yourself, check in with others and just maintain that emotion in your work. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And not, not be like too much in your head with it because <clears throat> I think when you forget that this like creativity is all about collaboration and you know, you're not some, it's not like the ego, right? You're not building for yourself. You're not building by yourself. Uh, you are part of a creative energy and putting back into it in a positive way as benefits you can't even imagine yet. <laughs> so. Just put it yeah, in. Man. Yeah. yeah, that's the future. Good energy, positive vibes, emotion, yeah. and creative work. I think that's a great place to wrap up today's episode. Yeah, no, that's, that's, a, that's a dope place. All right. Well, till next time. <laughs> till next time. <laughs> Peace. Peace. Peace.